Hello and welcome to Larry's Prairies, where you learn about animals and learn how to pronounce your teacher's name. So today is Groundhog Day. <laughs> Traditional, you know, festivity around a, a putative weather forecast by a rodent, which of course, of course, this year, if we if they were looking for wild groundhogs to do it, they'd have a little problem because uh, the, the region is uh, covered, buried in so much snow that you couldn't find the groundhog burrow in it. But, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, big, the big name groundhogs are all domesticated and so uh, the, we, know, we know where they are and the party will surely continue regardless of the weather. But, but, but of course, let's... Take a take a look at the at the reality of, of the groundhog before we get into uh, nutty, you know, nut, nutty traditions. So, all right. So this is probably going to be the easiest taxonomy chart to, to read of any of Larry's furries. So, Kingdom Animalia. It's an animal. You know that. Phylum Chordata. Vertebrate. Class Mammalia, she, gee, shocking, we have a mammal here. Order Rodentia, I don't need to tell you what that is, do I? It's a rodent, same, same, same order as, a ra as rats and mice and uh, all those other familiar creatures. <laughs> Family, uh, Squirry Day, that would, that would be of course the squirrel family. Again, you put... You, you, I'm sure everyone is well familiar with the squirrels. We see them all the time on the trees around here. Well, these are cousins. And the, and the groundhog itself, also known as a woodchuck or whistle pig, or the scientific name, genus species Mimoda monac. So should be noted that the, the species name monac and of course the common name woodchuck both Derived from uh, the the name for the for these animals in a couple different Native American languages, so in particular, woodchuck has nothing to do with chucking wood, <laughs> which is probably why they don't. <laughs> right. Anyway, so the groundhog or woodchuck, or occasionally whistle pig, and a few other less well known common names. Uh, you know. You've, I'm sure you've you've seen these bef before. If you, they're they're fa fairly small, seven, 17 to 27 inches long. If you include the tail, which which is a, a fairly short tail compared to other squirrels, it only amounts to about a quarter of the total length. Whereas, of course, your your common gray squirrel that you see hanging out in the trees, uh, the tail is as long as its body. Weight seven to eleven pounds, that make, making them one of the biggest members of, of the squirrel family. Although, for, uh, though they are larger. Uh, ground, so groundhogs, like uh, they they are considered herbivores because they almost uh, always eat plants, uh, mostly grass, sometimes berries. They do ra rarely eat meat. You know things that would be considered neat: insects, uh, ba baby, baby birds, b other small animals. But so, in, this is pretty much common in throughout throughout all all of the rodents that th that they have uh, this kind of flexibility in diet. And and in fact, the gr the groundhog is one of the least likely of all, of all the. Uh, of all the rodents, or even all the squirrels, to act, to actually eat meat products, so we consider, so it's pretty well considered an herbivore, even though it doesn't exclusively eat eat plants the way the way that some other herbivores do. Well, it's a rodent. That's how rodents are. <laughs> Groundhogs, of course, are noted for burrowing. That's what they do. They live in holes in the ground. But they can swim. They can climb trees when they have to. And groundhogs behaviorally have a somewhat confusing mix of social and asocial behaviors. 
They tend to be agonistic toward toward, toward other groundhogs. They're very territorial. They're they're run off. They run off others of their kind from the, from the, the area of their burrows. On the other hand, they are they are also no, noted to emit to a sound al alarm calls to war to warn other groundhogs of, of of predators, even though there usually aren't other groundhogs around them because they uh, are fairly solitary. Uh, yeah, the common the common name whistle pig refer, refers to the warning call that groundhogs make when they're about when they're about to be attacked by something. And of course, immediately before running into their burrows, preferably or up a tree if they have to, because ground, because the groundhogs like any like any animal are going to try to get away from anything trying to eat them. All right, so now ground. Groundhog Day. You, I'm sure we all we all know the sto the story. You, know, we, we, you bring the groundhog out on this on this day, and it and perhaps it see, it sees its shadow, in which in which case it's thought to be to be scared of said shadow and to uh, run away and go back hi to hide in its halls, whereas. Whereas if the groundhog is brought, brought out and doesn't see its shadow, it's it's more inclined to stay to stay out on the surface, and that mean that means an er, an early spring. Whereas seeing its shadow uh, supposedly means that winter will continue. So of course this is nonsense. Uh, it, uh, yeah, well, ground. Groundhogs are not scared of their shadows, and uh, no animals are really. And uh, they, and it's pretty well proven that whether that whether they run away or not, they, it has nothing to do with what the weather is going to be. But of course, this is this is an ancient superstition. It's not, you know, it, pre, it well predates the settlement of uh, the. Um, of uh, North America, which is where groundhogs are. Yeah, yeah, we have so groundhogs are hot are true hibernating animals. And, hi but of course, hibernation does not mean that you're asleep constantly during the winter. Hibernating animals do wake up on their own occasionally, and if you disturb them, they will certainly wake up. And so, and so the original version of superstition is that, it, is that, you know, observing the movements of these hi these hibernating animals can can be used to predict the weather. You know, you know, if 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 an if an animal spontaneously comes out of hibernation on a certain day, that 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 putatively means that spring is coming, and if it if it do, if it doesn't, then it, then your then winter is continuing. Yeah, you know, and a nice theory and kind of makes kind of makes sense if you think about it. But uh, in in fact, as I said, hibernating animals just wake wake on their own at pretty much random times during the winter. It's not, you know, it's uh, not not a matter of of uh, waiting for nicer weather. They ju they just spontaneously wake up at unpredictable inter intervals. Uh, however, th this myth of using using hibernating animals to predict the weather, you know, has been, you know, has been, a, been a long standing part of European culture, uh, basically, you know, basically taught of whatever hibernator you, ha you have in the area. So, uh, ba including badger badgers in, in, Ger in Germany, uh, had, Hedgehogs uh, in in Britain, uh, fo foxes occasionally, uh, be bears notably in Eastern Europe. Yeah, so it's a it's a common and well well entrenched uh, story, and so it makes sense that it would have been it would have been brought to the new to the new world and and attached to one of to one of the hibernating critters that we got here, the groundhog. <laughs> And of course, groundhogs do matter to humans other than the fact the the spurious use to predict the weather. So, uh, groundhogs 
adapt well to living in human environments, partic particularly farmland. You know, normal, normally ground groundhogs burrow in, you know, in in meadows or at the edges of forests. You know, farm, farmers' fields are also a suitable habitat for them, and and the farmers don't typically like that much because the ground groundhogs are herbivores. They they eat plants. They will they will typically they will frequently eat the plants that the farmer is trying to grow and also they're burrowing in the ground although they don't intentionally cause any harm uh, you ha if you have burrows you can it can cause damage so a per so a person could step in the in the in a groundhog hall and hurt themselves a machinery could 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 have fall could fall into a groundhog hall and get damaged in extreme cases a, a you know, enough groundhogs digging under a building could could undermine the structure. Very rare, but not impossible. So ground, so groundhogs have traditionally been considered a nuisance, and you know, you know, uh, far farmers would would traditionally hunt them either either to try to get rid of them so so as not to have groundhogs messing up their farm fields, or or occasionally just as game animals. They are edible, but if, but they do have they do also have some positive uses. We do we do use groundhogs occasionally as laboratory animals. Most notably in the study of hepatitis. So hepatitis is a is a viral d disease that that affects the liver. It, like like. It, yeah, it, it can be deadly, and like mi like many viruses, it's di it's difficult to to find good treatments for. And so ground groundhogs happen to be one of the few animal species that ha that has a virus that's similar to the human hepatitis viruses, and so it, it's it's useful for a study of such viruses. Also, occasionally used for other for other experimental purposes and. Like like any animal, it plausibly could be so used. It's on rare occasions used as a pet. So the photo here is, a, is a, yeah, is an old black and white of a of a of a boy with a pet with a pet groundhog. Yeah, date, photo dating back to 1945, I believe. Uh, the, although I'm sure there 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 are a few people who keep who keep groundhogs. You know, in more in more modern times, well, of course, there's the pe the people who keep the groundhogs for the Groundhog Day shows, like the like the guy the guys who maintain who maintain a gr a groundhog named Phil in Puxatawney, Pennsylvania. <laughs> so that so that's all. That's also, a, I guess, a form of a form of a pet groundhog situation. <laughs> all right, but anyway, so that's. But that well, that's the groundhog and what and what you need to, to know about it. It's a, a, cre well, a creature that's uh, native to our environment. It's some somewhat important to humans, uh, even without the silly myth. And yes, and yes, the myth is silly. So uh, I don't. So I don't know if the if the groundhog will see will see its shadow today, or even if they can dig out, dig the groundhog out of the snow to to show it, but. What, but whether it does or not, really doesn't matter. Inf information does matter, however. So I got I got mine on th on this one from from Wikipedia. Don't know. Don't have to go much farther for for really common animals like this. Uh, Im images from, from va various photographers, as noted, and. And a good good old share like licensing terms. So. Alright, so that's that that's that and I'll see you again next week.